Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. Uh, welcome to this video. Today I'm just going to talk about the fact, <coughs> sorry, about the Giants. Um, just saw an article recently about the, um, in The Athletic, about um, the New York Giants and as far as showing what you, what showing should be doing. Um, because one thing, it proves that the Giants beating the, the Minnesota Vikings in the playoffs kind of uh, essentially overestimated their potential. <clears throat> I mean, there was like so, so such overconfidence on Giants fans' part. It's like, okay, we might make it a close game. That if the Eagles game was a close game, um, management shown maybe as well too might have that. I don't want to say shown had that false sense of security. I think he's a smart. Uh, he's a smart enough GM to know that they still have a lot of lacking things. Basically that. Showing basically, uh, or upper manager themselves basically, not showing, but like <clears throat> the owners probably was like, oh, we're good enough to the point like we're just probably a couple pieces away, it's similar to what it was in like 2016, basically with the Giants, where first year McAdoo, they made the playoffs, they knew knew well, they figured okay, let's get some high priced players the next following year, and they just plain out sucked beyond that. I think this uh, the whooping they got from Philadelphia was great in the long term for the Giants because now it shows that they do have to rebuild and they have some building, you know, pieces that could they could work around essentially. Um, but it's more of a case where they do have to build and know like, you know, have to be smart with their money and such. I mean, to the point where like when the Giants signed Galladay, that was a big mistake in and of itself, right? So so the question comes down to is now this is with showing should he sign re sign Barkley for not McCaffrey money, but at least close to it for th at least three years. You know, a Barkley is going to be looking for a five to seven year contract. Giants, I don't think they could offer that. Uh, honestly, I would have loved to have, like, you know, maybe had him for one more year and then basically <clears throat> try to trade him off uh, to get some draft picks out of it. Um, you could have probably gotten a couple draft picks off of uh, Saquon Barkley, to be quite honest. Um, the other question is, is now with Daniel Jones, it looks like they're going to re sign Daniel Jones because of the, because of the Minnesota. Uh, playoffs it's it, I think that's again self-confidence now some might say I'm a hater on Daniel Jones it's not that I'm a hater it's just I'm a Giants fan and I need a good quarterback I want a freaking good quarterback Daniel Jones is not the quarterback everyone thinks he is I'll admit when he first got drafted I'm like all right maybe he might be decent enough depending I don't know but I, fe I, I fell into that trap and then realizing the first year and then the second year I'm like this is not the quarterback of the future for the New York Giants. Everyone that thinks that Danny, Dim Danny Dimes is the future, you're all wrong. <clears throat> if I had a choice between Danny Dimes and uh, Baker Mayfield, I probably would go with Baker Mayfield, to be quite honest with you. I mean, between the two, that is. Now, is Baker Mayfield just as good as Daniel Jones? Probably. He's my, he might be a little bit better, but he's not a number one tier quarterback. I'll admit that. Baker Mayfield is not a number two, one tier quarterback. I mean, if he has if surrounded with the right quote coach, I think he can be. Daniel Jones was surrounded with the right coach. The problem was, is like they weren't focusing on him enough. They were using Saquon Barkley more than anything else, and trick plays here and there. DJ, if you saw for the first six first six games, his QBR ratings were pretty much low. Um, quite honestly, it's just a more of a case where like they had to work with them a lot to increase it up at that point. But in reality, look at the defenses that they were freaking playing against. So, of course, his QBR is going to go up as a result of that. So, please don't say, like, oh, Daniel Jones is the the future of the Giants. He's not. Uh, and you, if you're going to call, uh, you, you could say I'm a hater. It's not a hater. I'm a realist. I'm a realist. Daniel Jones is not the QB uh, uh, for, for the future for the Giants. He's not your number one QB. At best, he's a backup QB more than anything else. He's literally your backup QB that can help you along the ways. Unless he's a, I'll, I'll admit this, he is a good game manager. He is a good game management quarterback. But outside of that, he's not anything like he's not your number one QB. He's not a tier one, maybe not even a tier two, close to a tier three. Honestly, he, you know what he reminds me of? Literally, literally, he reminds me of Trent Dilfer. Pretty much it. They were the exact same thing, and everyone's like, "Oh, well, Trent Dilfer won that, you know, got them to a Super Bowl." No, he didn't. It was Tampa's defense. Remember, Tampa Bay's defense brought him on that. He was a good game match. He knew I better not turn over the game. I turn over, make turnovers, or, you know, give turnovers. Make some completions here and there, and then we're good at that point. And that's what it was in this situation uh, with Trent Dilfer. And I think that was the case also with Daniel Jones. I mean, like, if he minimized his uh, turnovers, I mean, granted, yeah, 
he didn't have as much with the Eagles because the Eagles just dominated at that point. And they were like pretty much locking out everything. Well, first off, the Giants pretty much just threw everything out there and just like went without a game plan. Honestly, I don't think Daniel Jones would have done Because like, I think even Dable knew for a fact that Jones would not have done anything at that point. So we'll leave it at that. But from that, I think the Giants, they, they, there's no way they're going to be able to draft a quarterback on the 25th pick. They're not going to get another Purdy. Well, I'm not going to say Purdy. Another Tom Brady. It's going to be very hard to find another Tom Brady like that in the low in the drafts. Uh, maybe, who knows? I'll knock on wood, they could. But in any case, the Giants at least have good, a solid foundation on the offensive line at least. For sure, the offensive line is at least decent enough to the point where like they could build around that. And work around that, and you know they just need to get some good wide receivers, which they're gonna have to build out of the draft. And of course, a defensive line. They gotta build off the defensive line. The secondary is decent enough, but granted, a lot of them were injured, so we'll give them that part. You know, like a lot of the first rounders that they drafted, uh, shown drafted, were pretty much. You know, some of them were injured, so let's see how that works out next year as well too. But he can build off it. You know, the draft and such. But honestly, if I'm the giant, if I'm showing. I'm a Giants fan. I, I, everyone's gonna argue is like oh, you're not. You can't call yourself a Giants fan. Look, what about Dave Brown? I could bring back Dave Brown. Everyone was all hyped on Dave Brown. What happened? He sucked. So please don't say Daniel Jones is like the greatest. He's the godsend. He's not. Honestly, he's just a stopgap. He's a good game manager. That's as far as it goes. But in any case, let me know your thoughts. Do you think the Giants should basically sign some more free agents or build off the draft? I'm more of a guy that builds off the draft. And outside of that, I'll leave it at that. Uh, with that, I'll leave it at that. And please subscribe, uh, you know, and I'll just, uh, yeah, please subscribe at that point as well, too, honestly. Uh, with that, I'll leave it at that. Unfiltered, unedited, and un unrehearsed. Until next time.